Good morning, New Song. Happy Resurrection Day. We are so excited to be here this morning on the day Jesus rose from the dead. Woo! Yeah, feel free to shout it out wherever you are because that is worth getting excited about. So thanks for joining us. Let's go and worship Jesus. So right there where you are, just go ahead and lift a hand towards heaven. So we sing out Hosanna. Praise is rising, eyes are turning to you. We turn to you. Hope is stirring, hearts are yearning for you. We long for you. We see you as we, we see you we find strength to face the day yes lord in your presence all our fears are washed away washed away oh,
thank you that Hosanna means saved now. And I just want to invite you with us to say, Jesus, there are places that I need saved now. Places that feel dark and discouraging and overwhelming. And I need you to save those places now. Lord, we just thank you that you are the Savior and you don't wait to save. You save us now. Thank you that we can say Hosanna and you hear us.
And even when we are less, you are.
join with heaven this morning. We join with heaven this morning and we sing. We're just going to invite you to invite the presence of the Lord into your life in a new way. Can you just put your hands out in front of you, wherever you are, and say, Jesus, I invite you into my life in a new way. With your power, with your strength, with your wisdom. And I'm so grateful I don't have to do life alone. Because... Places where we felt shackled or chained or like we couldn't get past something. We thank you for the release of your presence. You tell us in your word that when we live in you, we do not have to live in darkness, confusion, or chaos. So invite your peace and your clarity in the person of Jesus Christ.
There is power in the name of Jesus. Oh, there is power in the name of Jesus. Oh, there is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. To break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. Sing that again, there is. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. break them, you destroy them, you demolish them. And that this day proved that very fact. Satan thought he had won. Uh-uh. It 
was all part of the plan. <laughs> so thank you for your power in the name of you, Jesus. We just want to say thank you for joining us for worship this morning. Pastor Lane's going to be coming in just a minute and leading us in communion. We are just grateful that we get to sing and celebrate the life of Jesus today with you. Well, one of the most important things that we do, one of the most sacred things perhaps that we will do uh, at Easter time, it's one of the uh, ordinances of the church is have communion. And even though we're separated in our homes at this point, I'm going to ask uh, if you would find something to represent the blood and the body of Jesus Christ. I've done it with hamburger buns and Cokes. I've done it with water and milk and crackers. I've done it with whatever. That part is not so important. But the fact that we do this in remembrance of me, as the Bible says. So whatever you can find, grab that. And I'm reading from Isaiah chapter 53. He was despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely, boy, we saw that today. This is what we're celebrating. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities, and the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And here it is. And by his stripes, we are healed. So, on the night he was betrayed, Jesus took the bread. After supper. And he looked around to his disciples and said, This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this, and as often as you eat it, remember me. My body. Remember, he's saying, remember the body that was broken for you. The lashes that was taken on your behalf, so you wouldn't have to be, you wouldn't have to be sick. So if, you're, if you are needing healing today, I invite you to, as we partake of this, to just ask the Lord to touch your, put your hand over the spot in your body that needs healing, and we're going to pray the prayer. Jesus, as we partake of the bread, I pray in Jesus' name that you would touch every body, heal every physical ailment. In Jesus' name we pray, as we lift it up to you, as we name it before you, as we touch that part of our body that uh, makes contact, a little point of faith and a point of connection with you, in Jesus' name. Let's partake of the bread together. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup and he said, This represents the new covenant my blood the old covenant was the blood of of goats and bulls and animals and such and they could provide symbolic and they provided forgiveness for a time but it wasn't once and for all when jesus died that good friday and came back that easter sunday it was one sacrifice for all mankind for all time today we celebrate that it's two things we celebrate his resurrection, because that's the power of Easter. And we celebrate the forgiveness for sins that he paid for when he shed his blood on the cross. So if you are out there today and you don't know Jesus, or you have wandered away, you've taken a left turn, and you're not right with God, now would be a good time to say, Lord, forgive me. I want you to come back, enter my heart, cleanse me, and change my heart. In Jesus' name. So, Father, bless the cup as we partake together, as we remember you. Lord, I, I can say the words, but I ask that you would come into every place where people are listening and watching right now. 
and you would come into that place with your presence and you would touch all let in a very real way your presence invade our space in jesus name we pray let's partake of the cup together Jesus name. Nelson. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved the wretch like me. I once was lost. Was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How pray. Just did that grace appear the hour I first believed my chains are gone I've been set free my God my Savior has ransomed me
amazing grace, unending love, amazing grace, unending love, amazing
and she worshiped him and Jesus said to her, Mary, don't hold on to me right now. Just go tell the disciples I'm alive. Go tell them I will meet them in Galilee. Immediately she got up and obeyed her Lord and went to the disciples. When she got to them in the upper room, they had the door locked for fear that something would happen to them like happened to Jesus. She came into the room after the knock that let her in. And she said, everything that had happened to her, she related it to them. Instead of them being full of joy, they were even more afraid. And they didn't believe what she had to say. Jesus, shortly after being with Mary, he, he, he went and he met two disciples that were walking to Emmaus. And he walked with them and talked with them. And he kept himself veiled and enjoyed the conversation. And then when they got to the place where they were going to eat, he revealed himself to them. And their eyes were open and they said, Lord! Immediately he left them. They got out of that place and went on the same road to Emmaus back to Jerusalem. And they told the disciples what had just happened and they didn't believe them either. So that night, the first day of the week, that night, the disciples were locked away in the upper room for fear. And Jesus himself came to them and he said, don't be afraid. As my Father has sent me, so I sent you. And he breathed on them. And he said, Receive ye the Holy Spirit. And then he gave them authority to forgive sins for any that they came into relationship with. And they understood. And they could forgive sins or retain. There was an authority that Jesus gave them. That night when Jesus was there with them, Thomas wasn't there. And when the disciples now and all of the witnesses told Thomas what had happened, he didn't believe them. He said, I tell you, unless I can put my fingers in the nail prints of Jesus' hands, and unless I can put my hand into his side, I will not believe, Thomas said. So a few days later, here's Jesus. And he appears in the midst of all of them once again. And he says, as he turns to Thomas, he says, Thomas, take your hand and put your finger in my hands. And take your hand and put your finger, put your hand into my side. Be not unbelieving, but be believing. Jesus dropped us. Thomas dropped at his feet. And he said, I'm here. And my God. Many other places Jesus appeared. At one time he appeared to over 500 people. Over and over and over. For 40 days he taught everyone, all of his followers, all of his disciples, about the scriptures and how they testified of him. And that he would come and teach and be born of a virgin. And that he would be arrested and he would be crucified and die and shed his blood for the sins of mankind to pay the price, the wage of sin for all who would come and believe in him. And then he would be buried and then being buried the third day he would raise again to life taking death victorious in his grasp so that it could no longer hold anyone who came to Jesus and the blood of Jesus covered their sins. In that moment that Jesus rose from the dead even before that, in that moment when Jesus shed the first blood, when he said, Father, forgive them, they don't know what they're doing. You and I pass from guilty to acquittal in the court of law in heaven. That's it. And Pilate and the religious leaders took Jesus and crucified him. But Jesus went willingly to give his life, a Lamb of God, the sacrifice for sin, so that as he rose again and took death captive, he could give to all who will come to him an acquittal verdict. Free indeed. Free indeed.
Well, good morning. My name is Lane Olson, and I'm one of the uh, pastors at New Song Community Church. I want to add my greetings to everyone that uh, has greeted you today. Happy Easter. Uh, I want to thank uh, our good friend and one of the communicators here at uh, New Song Community Church, Pastor Stan Kuhn, for that footage that you just saw of, uh, of that Easter uh, event that was recorded some time ago at, uh, at New Song. So the people that you see there are not ignoring the, coro uh, you know, the coronavirus uh, you know, distance and gathering stuff. That wasn't this time, but it looks better, I think, with people. So there you go. Um, anyway, thanks, Pastor Stan. It was good. This Resurrection Day is like nothing I've ever, ever experienced previous to this. It's different because we're not meeting together. Uh, but we've been praying that all of the elements that uh, have been assembled here today to celebrate and to remember the greatest story ever told, that's the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so no one else has really come back from the dead. And Jesus was totally unique among those who claimed to be God. So it was Friday, and Jesus had hung on the cross for several hours. He had a crown of thorns on his head. He was spread wide with, with nine-inch nail spikes through his hands and his feet. And he was bleeding, and he was dying, and he was suffering. It was one of the most cruel forms of execution that mankind had ever invented. I'm just saying, oh my goodness. Every time I think of a picture of Jesus on the cross... It just, it, it gets me and I'm thinking I, I'm not worthy and we aren't worthy. But he loved us that much that he did that. And so it was at the end of, of the day and, and a Roman soldier had already verified that Jesus had died. He cried out and said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And with that he gave up his life. No one took it from him. It wasn't the Roman soldiers. He gave it. It's important to understand that. So Jesus was, was, was dead, and a rich man called Joseph of Arimathea came to Pilate and asked if he could bury the body of Jesus. He wanted some dignity and some, some uh, show of affection for the master. And so Pilate ordered that the body be given to him, and Joseph and his helpers tenderly took the body of Jesus off the cross. And as was the Jewish custom, they wrapped it in a linen cloth and laid him in Joseph's own tomb that was nearby, hewn out of a rock. He rolled a big stone in front of the tomb and he went away. And that was Friday. And Jesus was dead and the disciples were weeping. The women were inconsolable. His followers were grieving and everyone was bewildered. Jesus was gone and all of their hopes with him. The disciples in particular thought that, that he would overthrow the Roman government and, they would, and establish an earthly kingdom and they would rise to power along with him. And they, they had left everything to follow Jesus, but now that he was dead and gone, they didn't know, they were in shock. They didn't know what to do. And that was Friday, it was a dark day. And in, in hell, Satan was throwing a victory party. He thought he'd won. All the demons of hell had gathered to celebrate the triumph of evil over good. It was one of those weekend parties that started on Friday night, and it went all night Friday night and on into the wee hours of Saturday morning, and it went all day Saturday, and it went all day Saturday night and into the wee hours of Sunday morning. But... Early Sunday morning, something began to happen. And Matthew's gospel describes it this way. Matthew chapter 28, 1 to 7 says, Early on Sunday morning, as the new day was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went out to visit the tomb. And suddenly there was an earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled aside the stone, and sat on it. His face shone like lightning, and his clothing was white as snow. The guards shook with fear when they saw him and they fell into a dead faint. Then the angel spoke to the women, Don't be afraid, he said. I know you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. He isn't here. He has risen from the dead just as he said would happen. 
Come see where his body was lying. And now go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead and he is going ahead of you into Galilee. You'll see him there. Remember what I've told you. What an event. So let me recap. In the middle of the weekend victory party in hell, in the middle of what Satan thought what his promise, thought was his proudest moment, the earth began to shake, the stone was rolled away, and Jesus closed down that party when he got up and rose in triumph with victory over death, hell, and the grave. On that first Easter Sunday morning, Jesus emerged from the depths of hell. He, he, he was down there. He pulled Satan's teeth. He defeated all the demons and all the power of darkness. He destroyed the power of hell, death, and the grave, and he emerged victorious with keys in his hands. Of all that was there, in other words, the power of death was gone. The captivity that was, uh, was part of, of, of hell and the grave was broken. It's gone. So Easter this morning is, is about two things. One, and it's the most important, was God provided a way on the cross when he gave his life for us for forgiveness of sins. The second thing is when he rose from the dead, he gave witness to the power that is available to those who believe. God can do anything. Nothing is impossible for him. And so first of all, I want us to know that Jesus loves us so very much that he gave his life for us. John 3.16 says it this way, For God so loved the world. That's everybody. That includes you. That he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus dying on the cross showed just how much God loves you and how far he was willing to go to get you. You see, the Bible says the truth of it is that we've all sinned. We're all sinners. But the good news is that because of the blood of Jesus, all our sins can be forgiven. The painful reality is, is this about sin. It has a, a sneaky grip even after we repent we, we sometimes, nobody walks a flawless life and we mess up and there's a tendency to desire to sin. And I want to tell you that God is able. It's not that we can will to do better, but God can keep us. If we'll run to him and ask for his help, he will make us, give us the ability to live a righteous life. So you might say, well, how do I get this salvation? How do I, be, how do I give God my life? How do I do that? Well, we need to pray a prayer. And John 1, 9 says it this way. He says, but if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. And in a few moments, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just invite you to pray and ask Jesus into your heart. And if I, I, I want to say this. If the Holy Spirit is speaking to you today, if God is drawing you to make that step, you'll know it. There'll be something going on in your heart. If today is change day for you, if you've never ever accepted the Lord, or maybe, you know, today is your day to do it. If you have once served the Lord, but you've made some bad choices, you've messed it up, and today you want to renew your relationship with Jesus. In other words, if today you're, you're listening to this and you know that you're not right with God, you're not sure that where you'll spend eternity if you should die, uh, it, it, before this, this broadcast ends, you can know that. And so I, I want you to understand, if you pray, you confess your sins, and you ask God into your heart, you will be saved. I want you to pray uh, these words after me. Lord, your word says, if we confess our sins to you, you are faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all righteousness. Lord, I come to you today and acknowledging that I am a sinner and I am in need of cleansing. I'm in need of forgiveness. And I ask, Lord, that you would forgive me and you would cleanse my heart and my mind and you would give me the will and desire to follow you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer with me, I want you to, to mail you some literature that will help you explain, help, uh, explain the step that you've just taken. You've taken the first step. 
to a wonderful journey that ends with eternity and life forever with Jesus in heaven. So uh, if I can get you to email me or, or write me or whatever it is, and you'll see our contact in, uh, information at the, the bottom of the screen, uh, we'll get that to you. And now before we end this broadcast today, uh, I want to pray for the miraculous answers to prayer in your life, things that you thought were impossible. I want to speak to someone right now who has, has given up on your, your, your prayers. You've been praying a prayer for a long time and it's not been answered, but, uh, and, and you've just thought, well, maybe I miss God and I'm not praying the prayer right or whatever. I want you to know that God is well able to answer your prayers today. I want you to know that to someone, he's staying, that the deal is still on. That prayer that you've even forgot about, pray it again today. You see, because Jesus had the power to come back unassisted, all on his own from the dead, he can, sure, he can surely help us with next month's rent or next month's mortgage, or this month's rent or this month's mortgage. He can surely solve all the problems solve, uh, you know, related to COVID-19. In fact, he has the power to, to handle any of the issues that you face. He has the power to heal you from any chronic disease. He has the power to heal Parkinson's. He has the power to heal fibromyalgia. He can heal arthritis, migraine headaches, diabetes, high blood pressure. Eyesight can be restored. Uh, heart disease, you name it. If you've got it, he can heal it. He can fi fix financial problems. He can fix relationship problems. Even the problems that are the results of poor choices on our part. He can fix those as well. And I want to speak to someone today that you are dealing with depression and you have been living under a dark cloud, God can fix depression today. And in Jesus name, I ask God for these things to be healed. I pray, oh God, that you would invade every, every space, every living room, every place where people are watching. And I'm asking God that you would invade our heart and our spirit and our mind. You would touch us in every way that we need to be touched. Lord, we plead the blood over everyone. Father, you were you said in your word that by your wounds we are healed. And Father, I pray for healings. And I pray for, for the fix for our problems. Lord, take them and solve them. Do what only you can do today for your honor and glory. We ask, amen. So I want to make mention of, of our website for further information about New Song. You can find us at www.newsonglincoln.com. All our other information is there, our address, our phone number, our email address for prayer or to just contact us at the church. Uh, we would love to hear from you and we have people standing by to respond to you. And now I have the honor of uh, blessing all of you. We do this at church. Would you lift your hands for the blessing? And let's pray together. Lord, the Lord bless you and keep you. and Make his face to shine upon you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Let this Easter time be the most blessed Easter of all. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for watching today. Until next time, be blessed.